Ask Reddit by Brids2235. People who have adult children that don't talk to you. Why do you think that is? Mom here. My 23 year old hasn't spoken to me in 4 years. It was completely my fault. I've struggled with addiction, alcohol, and for most of her childhood I was bad. I hope to be able to apologize to her someday. But, I completely understand and respect her decision. I feel like the only group of NC parents that routinely take ownership of themselves being the reason are the recovering addicts. Parent. It's because I fucked up and neglected the relationship. I wasn't the father she deserved. It's that simple. I'm going to pretend my dad wrote this and accept that him ignoring me, my daughter, my husband, and our life we've made, is really that simple. He neglected the relationship. He's not the father I deserve. My stepdaughter is an addict and mentally ill. Her son was placed in our custody by the state 3 years ago at 13 months old and she has never made the effort to regain custody. Her rights were terminated last year and we adopted him last month when the state gave us the choice. She has hated us ever since he was placed here and has convinced herself that we stole her child. She only contacted my husband if she wanted money, which he won't give her so that makes her hate us more. This is my niece, except she had 8 kids thinking this one she'd be a good mom. She has none 5 we're adopted out to non family and 3 my sister, her aunt, has. I was very deep in resolving my own trauma when my kids were growing up. I was often distant and emotionally unavailable. I wasn't the parent they deserved. It is the greatest sorrow of my life, I did to my kids what my mom did to me. I can't be sorry enough. I want to thank you, sincerely, for this comment and the level of introspection. My daughter went through a traumatic event when she found out her mom was having an affair with a junkie. Daughter was furious at her mom for destroying the family. Mom flipped out, threatened suicide to our daughter's face, blaming her. At that moment, everything shifted and daughter became the nurturer to her mom, who regressed into childhood a complete switching of roles when my daughter really needed a mom. Mom wasn't safe to be angry at, for fear she'd kill herself, so I became the target. We talk, but it's so terse and superficial that it's close to non-communication. I'd like to talk through what happened, even in a therapeutic setting, but daughter says that's off the table. Man this fucking suck to read sorry about that. Their dad gave an ultimatum if they want to have a relationship with him, they had to go and see, edit, no contact, with me my middle child agreed to those terms. My dad gave an ultimatum as well, talk to me or I'm taking you out of the will. I wasn't going to be threatened like that and we haven't spoken since. That was a lose lose for me. Accept the money and then that's the only reason I came back making me an asshole. Don't come back and talk to family, I'm still the asshole. I am just here for the what not to do with my kids advice. I had PTSD and didn't deal with it. In short I was a shitty dad. Not sure how many people understand PTSD, even those of us that have it. You look normal, no one can really tell you are emotionally mentally screwed up. It's very unpredictable and unpredictable can be rough on kids. I yelled too much and have worked hard to stop. Hope you aren't in a blame cycle and have forgiveness for yourself. It's hard. My father would say that my mother lied and manipulated us into taking her side during the divorce. The truth is that he boasted to me about pulling a gun on her to teach her a lesson, and then didn't understand why I thought that was unacceptable. I haven't spoken to him in a decade since that discussion. To this day, I believe he was contemplating murder-suicide or family annihilation. If you ask my mill why both her sons moved in with their dad when they were around 12, she'd say their dad manipulated them against me. I did nothing wrong. But it turns out they just liked being with dad more because they didn't have to raise their baby sister for their mom and he didn't abuse them. Abusers never believe it's them. I am a parent of a child who does still talk to me but rarely and I fully accept that it is my fault. 
I was an immature parent and made some bad decisions in addition to being inconsistent with my parenting due to immaturity. I am also on the spectrum but that's something I didn't find out until a few years ago when my son was diagnosed. I know I wasn't great and I understand my daughter and I try to give her space. Thank you for acknowledging your fault and for respecting your child now. Child here and I just want to say, huge props to the parents taking accountability. I wonder if mine will ever do the same. My mother told me, three weeks after I lost my father best friend at 14, that he has told her on his deathbed that adopting me was his greatest mistake. It stuck with me my whole life. I'm 38 now, and no it wasn't true. But that narcissistic bitch can rot in hell. When my dad died, my sister didn't want to share his inheritance the way I thought was fair. She has two kids, I had none at the time. She told me he loved her and the kids more than me anyways. I'll never forget, I have a screenshot, it made me speechless. I grew up in a retirement community. What I've noticed was it's due to a few things. The parent is intolerant of their child's life choices. That can be everything from drugs, religion, politics, racist ideology, parents, who their kids married etc. Sometimes it's the parent's unpleasant personality from either some personality disorder or just plain being an asshole. Some kids usually stay away cause they feel they've disappointed their parents and are hiding their life from them. The majority of the issue is usually due to an unpleasant parent. Side note how do you grow up in a retirement community? Aren't those usually age restricted to 55 plus? I think my uncle would say it's because his sons were brainwashed by their wives. The truth is, I think my cousins didn't see that my uncles, diagnosed, narcissism wasn't normal, because they were raised by him. Their wives, as outsiders, pointed this out to them for the first time and they made their decision from there. This is what happened to me and my sisters. SMH 24 years old when it dawned on me wait a second, mother never would have had to get us out the horrible abusive situation had she not got us in it in the first place literally never questioned it before then. When my parents died, we found a chalkboard in their attic where my mom had written, why do my children hate me she never knew. For the record, killing and damp, cooking my pet didn't help her cause. That is the creepiest fucking story I read in so many sentences. I'm so so sorry you lived with her for 18 plus years. I had a patient, she has since passed RIP, who didn't talk to her youngest daughter. We were very close, saw her 3 x a week, so I asked her why she thought her daughter distanced herself away from her. She simply said that they were too alike and they butted heads, even over little things. She did admit that since they distanced themselves from each other, she has had more peace and she thinks her daughter does too. Not sure if her daughter went to her funeral, although in my head I'm hoping she did. She died from COVID. My mum says I'm too much like my dad which is why we butt heads. My dad used to say I was too much like my mum which is why we butted heads. Because they are so lovable and have no issues that cause us to bump heads. Being told I was just like my dad hurt me as a young teen because he was always nasty to me and once I turned 18 I cut contact instantly. I wasn't there for them like I should have been. I had a stillborn and began having mental health issues with depression and eventually DX bipolar and ended up leaving the girls with their dad. I don't blame them. As the bipolar daughter of a bipolar mother, thank you for letting them live with their dad. I sterilized myself so I could never inflict that level of suffering on another human being. We begged our dad to please let us live somewhere else, but he was too busy working to job to see her completely out of control behavior. Child of parents I didn't talk to and parent of a child who doesn't speak to me. It's a lot of mental health issues. Didn't break the cycle. That shit is on me. I'm better now. Although my parents have both passed. There may be a reconciliation with my child, but I doubt it. This is exactly why I've chosen to not have children. My parents sucked and I'm very low contact. 
Both of their parents weren't great at a lot of things, for different reasons, so I decided to break the cycle and not have kids. But I'm glad you see your faults and can admit them. Hopefully one day my parents can admit their faults also even if just privately. Because I failed them as a father. I am going to pretend my dad said this. I really applaud all the parents in here who have even the slightest idea why their grown children cut contact. I'm positive if you ask my mom, she would say she has no idea and that she was a wonderful mother and did everything right. I read this entire thread and was so confused as to why so many people left their parents and moved to North Carolina. Then I saw one comment that explained NC is no contact. I kept reading stuff like my dad slapped me so I went NC as if North Carolina was some safe haven. LOL must have been a confusing read. Oh I'm I read through these comments and see if my dad is a redditor. Edit, shit this kinda blow up. Can you look for mine too? I know this wasn't the point of this post, but I am the grown child. Five years ago, on Thanksgiving no less, my mother told me my wife and I are bad parents because our daughter is an only child. Then followed it up by saying my wife graduated from a terrible high school. Not sure where that came from. She then topped it off with an ugly racist remark about my, white, sister-in-law being married to a black man. Lastly, she said I was not allowed to tell my wife any of this. That lasted about 45 seconds. And that was the end of that. I don't mind hearing this side of things as well. I'm the person that doesn't talk to their parents. Hearing other people's stories help. It's such a struggle because we are told family comes first but what if family is corrosive to your life? I am very careful with advice that I give to my adult son for fear that he's going to stop taking to me. Imo the kid comma is making some decisions in his personal and work life that I don't agree with or have concerns about. Decisions that I would not make based on experience or my personal views. I am biting my tongue to not say anything. I don't want to be a nagging parent because he is an adult and needs to make his own way. I will give advice when asked but I've stopped giving out of the blue opinions. I save that for my high school teens still at home. There is a difference between opinion and judgment. My husband struggles with this. When he says he has a right to an opinion, what he means is that he wants to pass judgment on a decision with our adult kids. They are very cautious in approaching him as a result. It is best to reflect on whether you have an opinion or judgment before offering advice. Mine doesn't because I won't give him any money because it just enables his addiction issues. This was the only thing to save my brother's life. Kind of off the main point here. I had a child I gave up for adoption at birth, primarily because I was a single mother W of 4 years old. I worked. I was always tired. It was the right thing. Fast forward 12 years, I'm surprised by a knock at the door. It was his adopted parents. And wham back came, all the trauma and pain and confusion, as they felt he would benefit from knowing me. He didn't. I became anxious about the relationship, and he eventually quit coming around. I think I was a disappointment to him, and I'm sorry. He has not stayed in touch, in spite of now distant attempts. I haven't tried in 3 years. He's happier and so am I. WTF with the adoptive parents? Just launching him upon you like that was not right. I don't talk to my parents because they don't make an effort to talk to me. Why should I give them the time? And let me guess you get the call Emmy more and come visit more but they never visit or call you unless they need something. Abusive parents deserve no contact unless they can admit their faults and heal the wounds usually it's too late when we are adults. My mother on the other hand after years of no contact came around and made peace. I'm still healing from her BS. I'm happy for you. Glad you guys could work it out. Mom of a 23 year old who went no contact a few years ago. If I'm really honest with myself, after years of reflection, 
I failed to provide the amounts and types of guidance he needed as he was growing up. I have reasons to explain why I failed to provide enough attention or did the wrong thing, but at the end of the day, the reasons why I failed don't matter a bit from his perspective. Because the result was still that he was hurt as a consequence of my choices. I hope he is healing and self-reflecting himself. I miss him terribly but respect his boundaries. I'm a stepmother, technically, to two adult children who went no contact years ago. I see why. I don't blame them at all. They're about to be my ex-stepkids. I genuinely wish them well and I'm sorry they have a shitty dad. I also haven't heard from my ex-stepkids in several years, and I don't blame them. The oldest to kept in touch with me for a couple of years after I left their horrible, abusive, awful dad, but after a while it fizzled out. I loved them very much, and I often stepped in to take the abuse that was intended for them, and I did the best by them that I possibly could. I only stayed as long as I did because of them. Eventually, I couldn't do that anymore. I wish I had listened to their mothers. It's very telling that none of the answers are from parents, all from children who know perfectly well why they went no contact. Missing. Missing reasons. https colon slash slash www.isonday.com slash psychology slash estrangement slash missing dash missing dash reasons dot html close bracket. My father is a convicted sex offender. He still blames the victim, family member, saying it's her fault. My sister doesn't speak to one of her kids. They have gone through spurts of not talking to her. She expects too much of people. She's very entitled. She doesn't follow through on commitments. She still owes me a wedding quilt she started married 43 years now. She's always the person who is hard done by. Nothing works out for her. She wants to be taken care of, that's all. She thinks she should get to spend her money as she pleases and someone else should subsidize her lifestyle because that's what she wants. She has burned through all her options and is on the verge of homeless. She's manipulative and a taker. She doesn't do anything terrible no drugs, booze or gambling and appears to be very sweet and caring. But she really believes she's owed much more and she shouldn't have to do anything to have it. She apparently abused her son who took her in. I have no clue what. I doubt my mom uses reddit but she'll probably say something like I don't know. I did nothing wrong. She's just ridiculous sometimes. My parents line was always oh she's just dramatic. We made sure she was fed and had a place to live. Um thanks for doing the bare minimum required to not have me taken away. Like how am I even supposed to respond to that? I'm 56, my children are 33, 31, 25, 23 and 22. I haven't seen them since they were 21, 19, 13, 11 and 10. I was in prison for 9 years and my ex-wife blocked any communication with them. She intercepted my letters and phone calls. Our divorce decree, which she wrote, provided for regular visits phone calls letters and progress reports. I had no means of enforcing that and now have only memories. I was released nearly 3 years ago and have tried to reach out to them. My youngest asked me not to contact her. I can't force a meaningful relationship, all I can do is have hope that they will reach out to me one day and always be ready to receive them. They're gonna blame the kids instead of their own shitty parenting. My adult children won't talk to me because they are ungrateful, they don't follow the commands of the Lord our God, as I always have, and they expect me to apologize for things that weren't a big deal or never happened. I never did anything wrong. S for me, but true for many. I wonder how many of these stories have a very different side to them. I wasn't the best father. Even though my kids wanted for nothing all through their time before leaving home I had my own issues when they were young and was distant and emotionally abusive. When I realized what I had been doing it was too late. As they grew up we had no common interests even as I supported them in theirs, they avoided me unless absolutely necessary for things they needed for projects or school. 
counseling helped, but emotionally they have no connection to me at all. I don't hold anything against them. I know it's on me. I hope they can have healthier relationships with their kids if they have any. No contact kid here, it's super heartwarming to read all the emotionally mature comments from parents. Before I clicked on this thread I was really expecting a bunch of narcissistic boomeresque comments. Makes me wish I'd ever hear something so self-aware from my parents. My oldest hasn't talked to me in 10 years. I fucked up as a dad big time. I have apologized, asked for forgiveness, gone to therapy, and accepted that it is her right to never speak to me again. I will love her to my dying day but never will I try to contact her without her permission.